Hi there, my name is Ken Hughes. Welcome back. How are you feeling after the 2022 Christmas? We're into 2023. Are you a little bit sad? Are you a little bit depressed? Are you feeling a little bit blue? Well, not surprising. This week we celebrate Blue Monday. Blue Monday uh, apparently is put forward as one of the most depressing days of the year. The third Monday of January. That's why I'm in a blue shirt and a blue waistcoat and blue jeans and the blue cube, but it's all very blue. But actually, Blue Monday is quite an interesting thing to talk about from a consumer sentiment point of view. We're obviously heading 2023 into a year of uncertain consumer sentiment, cost of living crisis, inflation and supply chain issues. And so any brand is one that wants to connect to better with its consumers. How do we do that? Well, let's talk about how you support your customer when times are tough. But let's get back to Blue Monday. How and why do we talk about Blue Monday? In fact, Blue Monday is actually a relatively new concept. It's only about, well, 18 years old. It was actually created by a PR company to sell holidays on behalf of a travel client called Sky Travel. They decided that they wanted to push the idea of booking a January holiday a bit heavier. They wrote a press release, they pushed it out to many academics, asked them to put their name to it for a fee. Most academics, of course, did not do that, but one did, a guy called Cliff Arnold. Cliff Arnold is a psychologist uh, and obviously who likes a press release not with, with a doctor's name on it so Dr. Cliff Arnold came up with this magic formula that decided that the third Monday of January was the most depressing time of the year. The factors that he used in that formula were weather and debt and time since Christmas and news resolutions and motivation and a variety of things. Of course it was complete pseudoscience there was no actual psychology behind it. Fellow academics ripped him apart. The university that he worked for at the time released a press release saying he's not one of ours he's only part-time um, but it was interesting it's the, the start of I guess what we were very familiar now with influencer marketing and we accept that but back in 2004 2005 when social media really wasn't a thing this was through traditional media channels the press release and pushing things out were important and influencers like doctors were you know putting an academic on something was important but look regardless of the fact that the formula is complete nonsense because you can't add time to weather and multiply it by debt you know there's no common units but the factors that he talks about are relevant in the northern hemisphere certainly this time of year so the first one was weather of course yes it's January it's gray still it's dreary the days are short you get up in the dark you come home from work in the dark school in the dark um, and certainly in the UK where this formula was invented it is quite rainy and dreary and drizzly this time of year. So regardless of the formula, of course, seasonal affective disorder is a thing and we all get a little bit down around this time of year. So yes, the mood is down. The next part of his formula was to do with money. He talked about debt. This third week in January is generally the week where most of us get our credit card bill from December. We open it, we think, oh my God, how did I spend that much on Christmas? And so we get a fright, certainly. <clears throat> So as customers, we're kind of thinking, whoa, I overspent. The problem with that, you get the credit card bill around the 20th of the month, but you don't get paid until the end of the month. So there's this kind of 10 days where you think, uh-oh, what am I going to do here? And so there's a bit of uncertainty, a bit of accumulated debt concern. <clears throat> Third thing in his formula was time, and he measured time since Christmas. So he thought, well, three weeks after Christmas, kind of four weeks nearly after Christmas, the sparkles are gone, the lights are down, the house looks kind of bare, and all that joy we celebrated over Christmas, what goes up must come down. So you're kind of feeling a little bit blue maybe post-Christmas. And he also talked about the time since New Year's, because we all make these fantastic resolutions in the end of the year. We're going to do this, we're going to go to the gym more, we're going to eat healthier, I'm going to smoke less, I'm going to move more, I'm going to, you know, all these things. And really around now, we've dropped them all. <laughs> we've done two weeks in the gym, we've missed a few days. Oh, what's the point? You're back to eating chocolate biscuits instead of carrots. And so the idea here is that the time since you've made those resolutions to now, you're feeling the shame, you're feeling the kind of lack of motivation. And so that's also feeding into this kind of just dreary, kind of squashed down feeling that you may be having. The last two factors are quite common that he talked about in his magic pseudoscience formula. He talked about lack of motivation, so basically your motivation levels are low, and also the need to action, which is kind of the same thing. Your, your inner agency, the desire to actually do something about it, to fix it, is also quite low. And so all those factors together, he reckoned, they kind of come together in this third week in January into a kind of a 
crunch where it makes you feel a bit depressed. Now there could have been other factors he could have put in there of course. Work, so we tend to go back, we go back to work full of energy, a new year, and around now the third week in, the workload's heavy, maybe you're realizing, oh my God, I'm stuck in a job I hate. <laughs> maybe you're back thinking, oh my God, I'd hoped I'd get more support, but I'm not gonna get it. And so, um, you know, you're, you're maybe being kind of a little bit depressed with another year of what you just had last year, maybe from a work point of view. He didn't talk about health. January is generally one of the sickest months of the year. The winter flu is flying around the world at the moment. We're still in the middle of the COVID uh, pandemic uh, in terms of new variants still. And so definitely health-wise, we're all feeding energy or our energy is low. And so anyway, you, we could keep going. There's a number of factors that make this month a little bit dreary. My point about the, the video today is what does this mean for a customer and a consumer and the opportunity that it gives us as brands to connect. So I did a lot of work during the pandemic. Many of you have watched those videos on the captive economy, the psychology of incarceration, the psychology of recovery, the psychology of survival. And so when consumers are scared, when things are uncertain, so we are heading in, as I said in the opening, to this year 2023 of a cost of living crisis. We have inflation, we still have the war in the Ukraine affecting supply chains, and so we can't get what we need product-wise. Things are a little expensive, and so of course consumers are a little bit worried, the big R word, the recession, and so that's the moment where a brand can step in and support its consumer. So you really need to think about it. you as a brand and business this year, what you can do to make your customer feel supported. How can you make them smile? How can you make them feel a bit secure? How can you make them feel that they belong to your tribe? How can you make them feel that you're gonna look after them? How can you make, so things like contracts and things like getting away from the transactional nature of business towards a relationship um, model, which is really important to, for, for that sense of belonging. We really need to look at that for 2023 and think how can we make a customer feel special? I think this is the year where you all need to appoint a customer experience delight manager or a customer happiness manager, whose job it would be to go through the entire customer journey and think what at each point we can do to make a customer smile, to make a customer laugh, to make them feel special, to make them feel like they belong to our family, our brand family. And so you need to do that with, with someone whose sole job it is to make those memories, to make moments that matter for customers that make them feel special. And remember, any kind of uh, challenging times that exist, a brand that steps into that space and helps a customer, you know, increases emotional bond with that customer in a far deeper way than you could have achieved otherwise. The last thing I wanna talk about then, of course, is the opportunity that it brings you. I mean, t times of crisis, while they are challenging, they also bring huge opportunity. I always love that quote from Ayrton Senna, and I've used it before. I know if you watch these videos regularly, you, know, you can't overtake 15 cars in the sunshine, but you can in the rain. So if you are you know, in challenging times, not everyone reacts the same. So if you have done the recruitment, if you've got a good team around you, if you've built an agile company, if you've built a corporate culture around innovation and creativity and risk, then you are ready actually for challenging times. You've done the work. So when the challenging times come, you're the company that's got the wet tires on. You're ready for this challenge. And I'm hoping that 2023, having gone through the three years of the pandemic, we are now ready as agile companies to look at this challenging year for customers ahead of us and to say, yeah, we can do this. We can actually make a difference here. We can build brand tribal following with good customer experience, good employee experience throughout this year and come out the end of it much, much stronger than we are coming in. That certainly is my hope for you this Blue Monday. Now, when it comes to success formulas, while uh, the original Cliff Arnold's formula is, as I said, a bit of pseudoscience, my own personal Blue Monday formula is C plus W plus N plus S. It's very simple. More chocolate, more wine, a bit of Netflix, and more sleep or sex, depending on what you want that S to stand for, whatever, whatever you feel like today. Um, so listen, I wish you all a happy Blue Monday. It's not that bad. You can always put Jemison in your coffee, don't worry. Uh, until next time, I'm Ken Hughes.